So now let's skim through the slides. So let's see what he says here in the first uh, line. So here is he says that D is something which is uh, N cross M cross R, right? So remember in these slides, if you uh, look in detail, he is actually have this view of that every cell is uh, uh, composed of I, J and its value, right? So it's a little different view from what we have seen, but it's essentially the same idea. So if you give me a, an index in the matrix, right, I can predict you the value for that uh, for that index, right? So for example, if you tell me, well, uh, I know the value of 0, 0, tell me what is the value of 0, 1, so I can tell you that. So in that way, we have these three indexes, right? I, J, and V. And you, you can see that this is the number of users, this is the number of movies, and this is the rating, right? And uh, now he, he immediately says that some of the cells in the matrix are unknown. And <clears throat> this, uh, so then we have this Y, which are our predictions. So some of the matrix values are unknown, but the uh, what what our predictions is it is a matrix, right? Right in the matrix because it's a matrix n cross m. Each cell represent a label, right? That is exactly the rating is exactly what we have labels, right? And then we have a loss function, and then we have to predict the missing values of the matrix, right? those values which are available they are our labels and those values which are missing that is what we have to predict and uh, this is another form in which he writes it but this now this there is this little y hat and that is when we will find these predictions then those predictions will be actually y hats right and what we will want is that um, the <clears throat> the prediction error is minimized right so so what, what so what we want is that if we do a prediction right and we we have some original labels then the error between those uh for so actually we have two matrices right one is the prediction matrix and one is the original matrix so we will compute the loss over those two matrices right and how we will compute them we will compute them cell by cell right over each M, each rows, right? So, so for example, if we have, uh, let's say this matrix and this matrix, and so in this case, what we are doing is computing the loss with this guy and this guy, and this, this guy and this guy, this guy and this guy, and then we, and then in the end, we will have four losses and we will sum them. And that is our error. That is very crude way to think about this. In the next slide, right, now this is the major key, right? We have said that we will have a matrix, right? A big matrix, for example, matrix M, let me call it. And we have to decompose it into two components. And right now we will do it with W and H. And here it is, right? One is W and one is H. And these both will be randomly initialized, right? Remember, these are our weight matrices. But the <clears throat> dimensions of these two matrices might not be the same as these, right? Remember that is that that should be different, and that is uh, what you can see, right? If we multiply these guys, we will get a new matrix which dimension will be n cross m. But if we multiply these two guys separately, uh, if we, we if we look at the dimension of these two guys separately, they might not be the same. And there is this k, right? So this guy, this may have n rows and k columns. k could be more than movies and more than users. It could be less than movies, less than users. So it's like a hyperparameter, right? We can change it. And for this, for the second matrix H, same, we have the rows which can be changed, right? So this is important, right? To understand that there is this, uh, we can and we cannot uh, keep this k the same as users or movies, right? So these have different dimensions. W and H, these both have different dimensions than N and M, but if we combine them, we get the same direction of the original matrix, right? 
That is why k is called a latent dimension, right? We can increase it or decrease it, right? And if we continue our discussion, then uh, the question is, can we, uh, how to compute that error that we have discussed uh, here, right? We have computed this error, this was very crude, but now we want to rigorously formalize that idea. And if you look at this uh, error here, this is simple error, right? And here, this there is the second part which we added, and this is called the regularization parameter. What we want is, we want that these the of the both the matrix values they should not be too big, right? We don't want them to grow too big. And why we want that? Well, there is a lot of explanation to that, but actually it will give us a smooth function, which is something we like, right? And there is uh, and this will also help our model not to overfit, right? So then our predictions will be bad. We want our predictions to be as close as possible to the true values. So this is this parameter which will regularize our loss function. If you want to know more details about the regularization, I can po post a link uh, in the description of the video. Okay, so just remember that in our error function, we have this area which is the error right which depends on the original values the the first matrix and the second matrix right the decomposition matrix and uh, we have this regularization loss we have this regularization parameter in this also this is a constant value and this is something computed value right so we can change the regularization parameter we can for example, make it a thousand or we maybe make it a 0 0.1, right? Depending on the situation. Okay, and the second thing is the metric. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, right, so you know from machine learning that we always have these bias terms. So if you remember this format, right? So we have this parameters A and we have this input and we always add this bias term. So where is the bias terms in these vector these in these two matrices? And if you look at here, he actually uh, he actually fix the first the, the first uh, column of the weight matrix W to one and the second row of the um, second matrix, right, H to one. So for example, if this is the second row of the H, right, then this is all one. And if this is the first column of the W, then this is one, right? And uh, you, you probably guessed it why we uh, fixed it to one because you remember if you remember sometime we write this expression compactly just like this and in that case I mean you just write this expression just compactly like this and in that case you just add one to the input right you just add one to the input and so the bias term is multiplied by a one so there is no change in the bias value, right? So it doesn't depend on the input, but we can write it compactly and we just don't have to take care of this extra plus. And finally, you can see now this, our bias term here for our first weight matrix. This is for the second weight matrix. And now we combine those, right? So you can see these, these two correspond to this B and this this guy correspond to this multiplication. Let's go further, right. So really this problem is just give me two indexes and I will predict what is the output. So if you think about it this way, then this problem becomes a prediction problem just as a supervised learning problem, right? Give me two indexes, right? Of the, the of the matrix right and I will predict to you what is the value in that matrix right 
So it's it's really just if you look at it this way, think about it like you have dimensions and they are just predictors like features, and the value that it, that any cell contains that's your prediction, right? So if someone gives me two indexes, I will tell him what is the output value. So it becomes similar to what is a supervised learning problem. And then there is uh, this details of how this regularization function, this regularization parameter is uh, added, right? So he just expands on that in these two, three uh, slides, right? And let's see what's next, right? So And next, after computing the whole loss function, and as I said, there is this regularization term and there is this loss term, right? And finally, you can see that there is this compact form, right? So this is the uh, our loss function. And uh, if you look at this line, this is basically computing the derivative of the loss function with respect to W, and in this, the, he is computing the lo the derivative of the loss function with respect to h. So remember, we always computed the loss function of the error with respect to parameters. And what are parameters here? Well, here we have two matrices for parameters. One is w, one is h. So we compute the loss function for the for the error, right? We com we have this error function, and we compute the derivative of this guy, this function, with respect to first y, and then h. So this that is how we will know how these um, these uh, parameters are affecting the loss function, and then then they, they will give us some direction in which we can go to decrease that loss, and. Um, if uh, that is clear to you, then we can go a little further to the uh, algorithm, right? And look at the algorithm. It says SGD MF, SGD, Stochastic Gradient Descent, MF, Matrix Factorization. And the first parameter is the derivatives of the loss function. They will give us the direction that how can we improve our... Uh, how can we improve our loss? Uh, the the direction, right? So it will give us the directions, right? And the second parameter is the number of, for example, users. In our case, number of movies M. In this, in our case, the D. Well, what is D? We know that it's uh, is the complete matrix, right? K. What is K? Well, they are the those latent dimensions, right? Remember. The, the 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 w and h they don't have to be uh, they don't have to have these they, they only have to produce the output n cross m but they don't have to be n cross m themselves but they can be n cross k and k cross m right for this guy and this one is for this guy so that is why we have this k this is also a parameter and we have then lambda, which is a regularization parameter here. And t is number of iteration, how many times we want to update those parameters. And this is the learning rate. And simply, if you look at the, the first line, it is just averaging all the values in the matrix. So it gives us a. So now you know what a is. It is just getting every value of the. It is just getting every value of the matrix and summing it and dividing it, right? So it's it will give you the average for every value, right? Why we do that? We'll see next. Um, but before that, let's see what is happening on line three. Well, as I said earlier, when we are doing this factorization, we have. This matrix, we want to factorize it into two matrices. We have to guess these two matrices, and that is what exactly what we are doing. We are randomly initializing these two matrices. Then we are adding this is for the bias. Remember from the last slide, we have we had those things, right? We have set up those columns and rows to one. That is exactly what is happening here. Now the next we are uh, computing those. 
lambda uh, parameters. They are our regularization parameters, right? From here. And next is uh, if you uh, if you see okay, so this is our number of iterations. How many times we want to improve our weight matrices? The second is okay. Now let's focus on this part, right? If you look at this part, it's it first computes the error, right? And based on that error, it is updating our weight matrices. So it first update the W, then it updates H, and it keeps doing that, right? It keeps doing that. And uh, for, well, this will, this, uh, this will be run for, for every, uh, for every cell in the random order, right? And it will run it for T times. So it will iterate through whole matrix T times, right? And finally, we get the weight matrix H and A, right? And this, this, this finally, if we get this W and H, so you know that we have a good approximation now, right? And we can now predict our resultant matrix we wanted. So I'll stop here.